As you know, I have a segment on the channel where I recommend really great indie and fan film projects. Today we're going to focus on some fan films. And I'm going to start with this first one. It's a Star Wars fan film, Star Wars X-Wing from Noble Engine. And it's directed by Christopher Parks. This is an amazing, fully animated short film based during a major battle at Coruscant, the capital of the Galactic Empire. You've got X-Wings and TIE Fighters duking it out over the beautifully recreated city. It's amazing stuff. The CG is fantastic. The action is fast-paced, entirely in keeping with the style of aerial combat we're used to seeing from the franchise. And the level of detail in the environments and the ships is just stunning. It feels like this would make for a great animated TV series. At times, I felt like I was watching the opening cutscene from a video game. What's truly incredible is just how the film is composed, how the action is put together. It's made in such a way that it looks like the entire film is one continuous shot from start to finish with no cuts. The virtual camera jumps in and out of the X-Wings, flies around them, hops from ship to ship, we enter the cockpits, we see the pilots, and then we pull back and we see the ships flying, dodging other craft, navigating through and around buildings, really helps to immerse you in the action. It is a spectacular achievement. So let's move on now to a Star Trek fan series. This one has popped up in my feed many times, and probably yours too. This is a Star Trek fan series made in the filmation style of the animated series from the 1970s. These are made by C.H. Danhauser. They're very unique little short Trek webisodes. The series is called Star Trek Logical Thinking, and they're made to be sort of educational segments. Typically, the episodes begin with two crew members somewhere on the ship having a conversation about something important, discussing some topic. It could be something to do with the ship's procedures or an away mission or something else. And two characters converse about something, and one of them makes a logically inconsistent or malformed argument. And then Mr. Spock, who's overheard this, steps in and corrects them, claiming that the form of their argument is invalid in some respect. Excuse me, gentlemen. I couldn't help overhearing. Yes, sir? The argument you are employing, Mr. Yeager, is not logical. He then proceeds to explain what kind of logical fallacy their argument exhibits. In fact, it commits the fallacy of argumentum ad novitatum, also known as appeal to novelty. His argument seems to make sense. That may be so, Mr. Austin, but the form of his argument is invalid. I like these because they're educational, and I think these could actually be quite useful to people who do a lot of debating, especially online. These could actually help you recognize not only logically invalid arguments in your opponents, but also helping to improve the quality of your own arguments and communication. False equivalence is a common result when an anecdotal similarity is pointed out as equal, but the claim of equivalence does not bear scrutiny because the similarity is based on oversimplification or ignorance of additional factors. These are wonderfully made and they feel like really authentic, faithful continuations of the animated series. Even if an argument seems to make sense, it cannot be valid unless the form is valid and that it does not exhibit one of the logical fallacies such as the two wrongs make a right fallacy. I always loved the coziness of the filmation animation style and the characters' voices are quite good too. C.H. Danhauser has also made a 30-minute animated Trek film called The Quintain, focusing on the character of Scotty, which I think is well worth watching. Now, the next thing I want to show you is a bit different. It isn't a short film or a fan film, but it is really awesome and extremely funny. Now, you might remember this Collider deepfake roundtable video from a few years back with these actors pretending to be Tom Cruise, Robert Downey Jr., George Lucas, Jeff Goldblum, and Ewan McGregor. And they did great impersonations of them, and the deepfakes were, were really great. Well, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's wonderful. But the guy who plays George Lucas, his name is Josh Robert Thompson, and his impression of George is just off the scale. Not only does his voice sound absolutely perfect, but he really captures George's 
eccentric and you know rambling quality it goes without saying the guy has has clearly studied george lucas extensively because it really feels like he can channel the man you know what i mean like he he knows george lucas's mind it's it's quite incredible i especially want to point you in the direction of a criminally underviewed video of himself and jeff richards on the jeff richards show jeff is playing dustin hoffman and it's another great deep fake and Jeff's Hoffman is incredible. Right, the backwards, yeah, the expensive. backwards forwards, the, you know, the wave, right. there's a wave to it. that You can catch that there wave, is. but you catch can the miss wave, the wave yeah. too. I mean, if you're not paying attention and you just, yeah. you miss the wave, you know. Both of them talk to each other in character and they stay in character for over a half an hour, just improving this most ridiculous conversation. And the banter is amazing. And they talk about such utterly mundane things, just banal things, while George is, is waffling about bizarre, off-the-wall filmmaking stories and personal anecdotes. We're talking about what dire directions are important and do you walk through the door? And I always say, yes, walk through the door. I say, I say, create your own door. Don't walk through the doors that are here. Make your own door. You know, that's what I do in my own imagination. You know, walk through doors. In fact, my house, you know, you've been to the house. I have, I have 500 doors you know, that I just have set out. You, uh, and some of them are just door frames in the yard, and I just walk through them. It's, it's a lot of fun. Where, where, do you get all those, fun. where do you get all those doors and door frames from? Well, you know, Home Depot. I get, I guess I got a guy, you know. I get, a, it's, uh, you know, I get them at cost, so it's, uh, it's a pretty, pretty good deal. And it's all very eccentric. And, and the first time I watched this conversation, I literally cried laughing, and no exaggeration, like there were tears in my eyes, I was in pain, I was laughing so much. This is my kind of humor. I don't know how the two of them kept the conversation going for so long. We, we talked about this, you know, maybe a couple of years ago, we talked about, you know, Star Wars is, is a diuretic, that's what you don't realize. I've had a lot of people tell me they've had to go to the bathroom during those movies, or you know, they uh, sometimes they get tired, but most of the time, oh, I had to go to the bathroom. I missed, you know, the, the second act or whatever. Well, it's designed that way because I can never come up with a good second act. So the films are designed so that by the time you get to that point in the film, you have to excuse yourself to, you know, excrete or, you know, whatever it is you have to do. Uh, there's actually a couple of these Dustin Hoffman, George Lucas um, parody interviews on his channel, but Jeff does does great stuff. And he's got lots of other content there, so be sure to check him out and subscribe to him. Now, the final fan film project is one made by Kennedy Boy Productions from six months ago. And it's an alien fan film called No Man's Land, set during the First World War. It takes place on the battlefield in Ottoman territory. It is an incredibly cinematic and well-paced feature film quality short movie. It's a half an hour long, incidentally. It is jaw-droppingly good. And, and setting an alien story in, in a period setting against the backdrop of World War I, I think uh, creates a really unique visual component as well. It's a very clever idea. Cinematography is wonderful. Haunting musical score and brilliant performances. Very well directed. It, it's a really professional production. This is written and directed by Christian Kennedy. Uh, in an enemy trench, the soldiers have done some digging and found something, something otherworldly, uh, something that likes to come out at night. The soundtrack and the atmospherics of the film are just off the scale. Great lighting, uh, top-notch acting, just a glorious film. So they go down into the tunnel and they find what appears to be a buried alien ship. Uh, later, the aliens emerge and from there... Uh, they go up into the tunnels and into the trenches, and there's, a, there's some close quarters firefighting after that. The creature effects are brilliant. They're just as good as the official Alien movies, incidentally. It's definitely among the top 10 best fan films I've ever watched. So check this one out. It's linked below. In fact, all the videos that I've mentioned today are linked below. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.